You understand? I understand. So, uh, we're talking about Bitcoins today. You guys were asking about them because I've been, uh, I've been talking about them recently. I'm yeah. trying to find out a little bit about bits. A little bit about bits. So let's talk Bitcoins. Just curious myself. Well, first off, cheers what? to Yerba Mate. Powerful, powerful herb from South America. Gives you energy, gives you clarity of mind. Very healthy. Ten times the health benefits of green tea and beyond. Clarity of mind. Check out circleofdrink.com. COD. COD. Circleofdrink.com. Salute. So, we're talking about an innovation of only five years. In 2009, somebody decided to create their own digital currency. Now, I've only been studying this for like one week, literally one week, so I'm no expert, I'm no, uh, uh, you know, an expert on this new protocol, this new currency of money using cryptography. I'm just, I just studied it for one week and I'm here to share what I know about it so far. Uh, so in 2009, somebody created their own digital currency. There was no law saying you can't create your own currency. And he issued, uh, he built a system that allowed people to literally buy these coins, these digital coins, and then if they want to, they could redeem them for their own currency. USD or, you know, Chinese money, yen, what have you. So there's only been a certain amount of these coins that are issued. So there's actually a fixed point of these coins. So you, they cannot be, they cannot be uh, in, affected by inflation. So there's only, there can only be 21 million coins out there in the world, okay? But those 21 million coins, I believe, each one could be broken into 100 million units. That's crazy. You understand? So it's literally an astronomical figure that can support a worldwide currency. But it, the interesting thing about Bitcoins is that it's not only a currency where you could exchange for real fiat money, fiat money is physical tender, physical money, like the US dollar, but the system uses 100% pure mathematics to control it. So, and it's decentralized, there's no central government, there's no federal reserve, it's just literally people with computers that help support this Bitcoin network by using hardware, using video uh, cards on their computers, high powered ones, to help basically, without getting into all the techy techy super techy stuff, basically encrypting everything, using cryptology, that's what mil military grade uh, coding is. When you're trying to use sensitive information and transfer, you have to break it into pieces. And it cannot be broken. It's almost impossible for it to be broken. So this currency is very safe, actually. So, for instance, say, you know, uh, you go to the bank one day, and this happens all the time in many countries, and all your money's gone. And the government's like, oops, we had to take it. You're not getting it back. You cannot get it back. This is what's so exciting about Bitcoins, is that this currency can never be taken from you. It's yours, you own it, and it's encrypted. You have your own digital wallet. And the only way that somebody could get your money from Bitcoins is this, yes, they could hack into your system, but banks get hacked every day. This is even harder to hack. Or if somebody gets your digital wallet, what you call your, your wallet, they're calling it, where you hold your Bitcoin. So my Bitcoins right now are literally on my phone, on my iPhone. Your own and they're being protected by literally hundreds of thousands of people who are securing the network from their own locations with their own hardware, their own software. It's your own disclosed digital currency. Right, and, and for their protection of this blockchain, it's called a blockchain, basically the program that computes and protects and encrypts everything is run and protected by any individual that wants to contribute. Crazy. And they get a fee, like how a stockbroker gets a fee when they make a trade, a buy and sell trade, they get their little fee, well so do these Bitcoin miners who monitor the system, uh, check the system, make sure that the money is really validated. And it happens within seconds sometimes, at most maybe minutes. So think about the implications now. This is where it gets really exciting. Never before has this been created. Say you want to send somebody a million dollars tonight to your friend in, uh, let's say, the Caribbean. You can send that million dollars in 10 minutes online, five minutes online, without paying a bank fee. That's crazy. Never before has that been created. Maybe you're gonna pay 0.5%, maximum 1% to transfer that money if you do it with Bitcoin. 
So Maybe. this is going to destroy the, the, the banking system that we know. It's going to change everything, man. It's pretty exciting, exciting uh, invention. You So did you follow kind of what I was saying about this digital currency over there? Yeah. What do you think about it? I think it's a new age. I feel like a lot of people will be more comfortable knowing that they're not being monitored by an outside party. Right. Like you knowing that you're the only person that's doing this encryption really changes the way that you transfer your ideas or transfer your money. Oh yeah, it's a game changer. And this is my own case study. When it's I found a speed, out about it, really? Yeah, dude. When I found out about it last week, I've always known about it for the past couple of years, but I never really studied it. Until last week when I was like, all right, let me figure this whole thing out and start to start to understand it. Within half an hour of looking into this, a little bit deeper than last year and the previous year, I started to accept Bitcoins on my website. That night, That's crazy. somebody paid for some Yerba Mate from CircleOfDrink.com. In Bitcoins. In Bitcoins. That's crazy. Now think about this. This is the part I haven't explained yet. Yes. Bitcoin can be looked at as a protocol, as a system that to transfer any sort of information to use cryptology, coding, to break it into pieces so it's protected. But remember, it's actually a currency that can be exchanged in, on the open market. The open Bitcoin and what you call alternate coin market. So Bitcoin is subject to significant change in value or depreciation on any given day, any given second. So you can think about this. It think about this. the gaps between private and public. Yes. Dude, think about this. You put your money in the savings account, say Bank of America, Chase, wherever. Maybe they're going to pay you, party. what, 0.3% a year? If you're rich, if you have hundreds of millions of dollars, fine, that makes sense. But if you're going to rely on 0.3% a year, as opposed to putting your money in Bitcoins, some of it, not all of it, but just play around, put some of it in, keep it in, your money... Could increase in value of five percent in a day. That's crazy. In a day, five percent. In a day, thirty percent. Now you can also use this currency to buy what you want to buy. So, for instance, Amazon is going to start accepting it eventually. So you're going to be able to go on Amazon, pay in bitcoins. Overstock.com already accepts it. Dish Network. And I mean, already accepts it. Now that when you when you're speaking more on it, I'm actually like you want to start to understand. I'm, it I'm filtering more thoughts because now you're thinking about what is the actual value of the U.S. dollar. Right. The Bitcoin steps in right. and increases your value of money because all the government, over again. If it wants to do the value of something else, not necessarily exactly. the money. Exactly. Right. It, it the government the value of what money does it this is, thing called money it, quantitative money easing, which just means inflation. Quantitative easing is oh, we're in a tight bind right now. Let's just print more money. So when you print more money, what happens? You become broker. Yes. That means you have to pay <laughs> with more money to get things because everything is increasing. In the price, but not value. That's crazy. So it, it depreciates, and you can't play that. You can't play that game of supply and demand with Bitcoin. No, because, because the a, value is there's a finite amount. It's, it's a finite amount. There's a finite amount. There's a finite amount. So the one that ah. demand right now it's a shaky because not so many people know. So this is the time to really jump on, okay? But once it becomes a currency that's accepted by Wall Street, let's say Wall Street or huge exchange institutions. And they're able to play their game. Well, they're going to dump hundreds of millions of dollars into it. So everybody now Inflation has a little point. Increases again. Right. Well, what's going to happen is you got you got to have a rising market at that time because there's going to be a higher demand for the given supply. It's like its own currency of stock. It's almost like you have a piece of a company. Almost, yeah, sure. That's that crazy. you believe in. All right. So I have a few questions. Sure. Then, with that in mind, is it like carrying for stock or? Is it the maintenance, he's asking about the maintenance on, the, on it. Okay, so Zeke is asking about if you get into Bitcoins, is it almost like holding on to a stock, a part of a company that is open to fluctuations on the, on the market? And yes, it is a part of that. So for instance, you have two choices really when you, when you accept Bitcoins from somebody. Uh, you can either hold on to it and for that particular day, whatever you bought it for, it could change. It could change at any given moment. So say you got it for, say right now, uh, five hundred dollars. You pay for one Bitcoin, which is kind of the price right now, five hundred U.S. dollars. 
tomorrow might be 499 or tomorrow might be 510 so it's open to a fluctuation of currencies yes or you could just get rid of it quickly at the price you got it for right away and so it almost acts like just pure usd tender fiat currency you see yeah second second question all right so if that's the case then how would you go about redeeming your bitcoins into actual monetary means that we go by on a daily basis oh that's a great question man so Zeke asked, if, in case you guys didn't hear, how would you actually convert your Bitcoins to regular physical money, fiat money? Very simple, actually. You go to websites that cater to this processing. So, for instance, one that I use is Coinbase.com. Coinbase.com, and there's many others. Where basically, you sign to the site, it's just as easy as signing up, if not easier, to PayPal. You connect your checking account, your bank account, to it. Uh, they verify that maybe it takes a day or some some cases less than a day and then you literally debit your Bank which means extract money from your bank and credit that money and convert it to Bitcoin So you bought 10 bitcoins with your USD from your bank got debited and then credited to your coinbase account Which now you are the owner of bitcoins you understand yeah. so now if bitcoins go up in value You could just sell them and you just made whatever you made. Maybe it was $10, maybe it was hundreds of thousands, maybe it was 20 bucks. As opposed to when you put your money in the bank, five days later, you're, it's gonna be the same amount of money. And the bank actually got richer off you because they interest. borrowed your money and they loaned it out and charged somebody a ridiculous interest rate. And that was it. They basically used your money. They borrowed so they could, they borrowed, you, you're borrowing. That doesn't happen with Bitcoin. It's a whole different. There's no centralized system that controls Bitcoin except every individual. That's why it's, it's, the it governments are scared itself. right now. They're so scared that some governments are jumping on, and some governments are like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, what's going on?" But it's unstoppable. How, how could you stop it? You can't. It stop naturally it. maintains itself. Yeah, it's a living ecosystem. It's crazy. Now, third question. So now we covered those two. Finally. Are Bitcoins going to be easier to access than actual money that we see on a daily basis? So, Zeke asks, are Bitcoins going to be easier to access than regular fiat money, regular physical dollars on a regular basis? And absolutely. Why? Because check this out. Bitcoins, digital currency or, or cryptocurrency, it's going to make the physical dollar obsolete. Because you're going to have your cell phone now, right? You're going to walk into a store, and you're not going to have any physical money on you. You're not even going to have a, a debit card or a credit card on you. Why have that? You're going to have your phone, and your phone is literally going to be scanned, and whatever was purchased automatically gets debited from your account. So when you pay your phone bill, you pay any bill, or any, it just debits from your account. There's no need for physical money anymore. Physical money's dead. So as this evolves, this currency, or this protocol really, it's just a system, it's going to further the extinction of the banking system as we know it today. I think that's one of the more brilliant ideas I've heard of. That's a brilliant idea. I mean, it's on the level with the creation of the internet, in my opinion. Yeah. It's well, on even the, the dollar itself. It's on the level of that sort of innovation. How many people actually know about this? Oh, not too many people. Because you ask like, you could go ask 30 people, and I would print, none of them would know about it right this now. This type of stuff being mainstream media. Well, it is kind of mainstream. It's been profiled on major news uh, outlets, but See, still, People didn't latch on. People didn't latch people on. They're confused. Hooked. They didn't know. Like, when I first heard about it. They fear the unknown. Yeah, I, I was looking at it, and then I kind of didn't fully understand the whole thing about how the miners, the, 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 the computers that protect it. So I kind of like fell away from it but then when I started studying it again just a week ago I really got into the it filtering system on it what was that you're questioning yeah I was filtering, questioning the whole viability system. of it if it's really you could really get physical you know money out of it I wasn't sure so I didn't even further investigate until just a week ago and now I'm totally absorbed like I'm not saying go out and invest in it I'm not saying go put your life savings into it but I'm saying look into it because it's something that's inevitable it's coming yeah, and if you're able to ride that wave of emerging new technology, then you are at the you know the bedrock of that 
innovation and those people who are the, the movers first movers always make money always first movers always make everything they want not just money but they make situations they make situations you understand because they, they're already ahead they're already looking into the future everyone's calling them crazy but they're like oh i don't care i'm going into the future i'm going to create all these things based upon this new technology and everyone's who's thinking like oh it's not real i don't understand it. it's not real i don't even want to investigate yeah, yeah, yeah. they're the losers they're gonna they're gonna lose out which that's an, that's always gonna happen there's no stopping that then they'll catch on 10 years from now they'll be like, oh it's mainstream now if only i would have been so and so like you had the chance so yeah it's just, it's it's just innovation man it's, it's not even about money it's about innovation you know it's about creation and and bitcoins is just a very great tool to fuel innovation and that sounds kind of you know like broad statement but it really that's how i look at it man it's really i look at it i'm like scared of it almost i'm like damn this is powerful man like this is a powerful system yeah, bro, the implications totally like, yeah like it's something like i think the whole idea of it like you know what i mean like that something of this caliber is actually yeah. about like, shaking it's gonna shake the, the whole, whole world you know man. what i mean like it, it, it shifts like think about what's out. happening now in argentina argentina this is actually very interesting their money is always depreciating it's always just falling out of, out of space it's horrible currency the argentinian peso so a lot of argentinians the ones that know about bitcoins they're taking their argentinian peso buying bitcoins with it okay and either holding on to the bitcoins or exchanging the bitcoins for dollars that way their currency holds value now the bitcoin is, is a value incubator it's going to hold the value so they're not going to be subject now to the uh, insane depreciation. depreciation of the corrupt government. Something so you see that it's protecting people's money. It's actually Bitcoin's protecting your money. But it's it's open to change, just like any other currency is. It's not the usual what are you doing? bank system. That it's not the usual bank not, system. No bank tellers. Right. There's, right. there's a bunch of different There's a lot it of different variables. It reminds but, uh, me of... That was a great build on Remind Bitcoins, man. We're going to end this video and keep on discussing oh, it within is ourselves. A, is that a hotel? Peace out, guys. Enjoy Yerba Mate. Circleofdrink.com. And definitely investigate That's Bitcoins. Uh, a good place to go is Bitcoin.org. Yeah. Peace. The Versace. The Versace.